what are you driving and are you excited? Um, well, I'm going to go backwards. Yes, I'm super excited. I'm really looking forward to this event and I am Julian. I run the YouTube channel Adrenaline Junkie Prod. So online, sometimes I'm referred to as Adrenaline Junkie. Um, although I would say there are some heavier senders online than me. Uh, we love trail riding, we love technical complex trails, we love hill climbs, we love rock crawling, and that's kind of our bread and butter. Uh, there's a lot of guys that ride in our crew, and if you watch side-by-side -side content, then I'm pretty much willing to bet you've come across at least one or two of our videos in the past. What I'm riding is a 2017 Polaris Razor Turbo, but it is far from stock. That's kind of just what it started out as. I don't think there's anything left on the machine that hasn't been modified in one way or another. Um, from the tires to the suspension to the tune on the engine, everything's been changed. I'm just really happy to be part of the video here and my goal here is to promote these grassroots events. Um, it's events like this that give us something to look forward to in the summer and I'm just here doing my part, showing it to the world so that hopefully next year there's even more people interested signing up on this event because the Dacre Rally is absolutely insane. It is 600 kilometers, about 350 miles in one day. You get 24 hours to complete it. This is not, this is not easy guys. This is big leagues. Hey guys, the day has finally arrived. There's been a lot of prep leading up to this moment, but the truck is loaded up, the Razor is ready, and we are about to hit the road for the Dacre Rally 2022. It's gonna be awesome. We are all super excited, super pumped for this event. If I had to guess, I'd say the Razor is not gonna be looking this clean for long. The, the goal of this whole video really is to show you guys how much work goes into an event like this, both planning it um, from, from the organization's perspective, like the, the Rally Connects, how much work Lee puts into these events, as well as how much prep time goes into getting into an event like this, taking part in it and making sure everything goes smoothly. Um, it's a team approach. It's not really a one man show. Um, you're gonna see a ton of people there and most of the people you see there didn't get there alone. They got there with friends, family, support from all around, whether it be sponsor support or support from their loved ones and their friends. It's a, it's a lot of fun, this hobby, but it's also a lot of work and it is very expensive and it's only getting more expensive. So having that help, having that support really makes a lot of this possible. Thank you to all the fans, all the viewers, all the supporters. And most of all, if you're new, I hope you enjoy this content and I hope you stick around, subscribe and check out some of our future uploads as well as some of our previous projects. Um, most of all, uh, hopefully you can feel how much fun we're having in this video and we can take you along for this adventure with us. So hop on in, buckle up and enjoy the ride. Are you ready? Yeah, they are ready. We're heading to the Dacre Rally. Oh, Are you yeah. super excited? Oh yeah. Yeah, super it's excited. Been four months since we started getting ready for rally. Yeah, we've been getting ready for a long time. Basically since the, the last winter ride when I destroyed my front differential and broke some stuff, we've been kind of prepping for this rally and getting the razor ready. The razor is 110%. It's not been this fresh since it was brand new and it's actually way better than you. Just getting the buggy ready for this wild event. We've been working really closely with our sponsors at Royal Distributing. They've been getting us set up with basically all the lubricants, maintenance parts, components that we need to get this thing ready. We've been working with our partners at WR Performance Products. They got a ton of cleaning products our way to get our machines all clean before the event and after. Uh, the guys at RadioWorld.ca have been amazing. They are hooking us up with two awesome Garmin Overlander units. And we're gonna be taking a trip down to Radio World and they'll be explaining the units to us. So we want some time to get to know the unit before we go to the event. And we also need some time to shake down the machines, get some mileage on them after all the mods. Tons of modifications going on on this machine to make it reliable. This machine is ready to rock. I don't see it having any issues. A ton of work goes into preparing for an event like this behind the scenes. Aside from, from, you know, just loading up the truck and getting there. We're gonna keep picking away at it. We're gonna take you along for a trip. We're gonna head over to the guys at Radio World. We're gonna meet up with them, pick up our GPS units. We're also gonna head down to WR Performance Products to their headquarters, meet up with those guys, pick up some goodies. We'll be heading over to Royal Distributing. We're gonna have a chat with CEO at Royal Distributing. This is a team approach. Teamwork makes the dream work, guys. You need a support network behind the scenes to make a lot of this stuff possible, like these videos, 
like these projects, like these events. This is gonna be amazing. The cool thing that you see with all these brands that are taking part is that they support this industry, they support this passion at a grassroots level. Their business is only as strong as the industry that they support. At the heart of all this, these companies were started with passion in mind. But you know what? Sometimes people bust chops and say, oh, you know, you." You're just, you're pushing all these, these products or you're pushing all these supporters. It's not about that, guys. Most of these events wouldn't be possible without these bigger brands throwing marketing dollars at them. All these groups work together and it's a team approach to make a big event happen. Uh, the big guys didn't start off big. They got there playing their cards right. We gotta support motorsports, power sports, all this stuff at a grassroots level because it is getting tough. There's a lot of pushback from various areas on the hobbies that we are passionate about and we can't let anyone take that away from us. And I want you to experience this adventure through us. I want you to feel the emotion and the passion and, and how much we love doing all this and the fact that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to make all this happen. There's nothing we love more than the great outdoors and exploring it. And these machines and these events allow us to explore so much of that wonderful terrain. There's a lot more to this lifestyle than you might first see um, without kind of diving deeper into it. And if you're new to this lifestyle, but are interested in it, um, I'm hoping that you can get a feel for what a lot of us are about. And I'm hoping we can share a little slice of our passion with you and you can see why we are so passionate about what we are. Uh, we soak it all up and then at the end we reflect on it. Um, you know what, you're never gonna regret the things you tried, just the things you didn't. So uh, let's see how she holds together. If it holds together and we hold together, the weather is supposed to hold together and be perfect. This is shaping up to be an awesome, awesome event. Hopefully the first of many. We're here in Guelph, Ontario at Royal Distributing. This is one of their five store locations. If you've been watching my content for the last little while, you probably know that Royal Distributing has been helping support the channel for coming on six years now. I'm standing here with the CEO, Jordan, and he's gonna tell us a little about how Royal was born, where they are now, and where he sees the brand going into the future. First off, Julian, thanks for having me. Thanks, Great to be a part thanks of it. for your support over all these years. Of course, of course. Yeah, so Royal started in 1990 as a mail order business. It actually started right out of a barn just down the road from here by a family of his power sports enthusiasts. Just loved the sport, loved being part of it. You know, ran the mail order business for a couple of years and eventually opened up a store, then a second, then a third, then a fourth. And then we just layered on our fifth store right now. Um, in addition, you know, we've really grew our mail, our mail order and e-commerce presence throughout Canada and now have a, you know, a pretty strong coast to coast e-commerce channel running throughout Canada. Well, that's awesome. And I mean, aside from aside from the retail end of things, you guys also do a lot for the power sports community. Um, you support a lot of racing, you support grassroots events, you support projects like this. Um, and I always think that it's important to show people the face behind the name. Um, you guys are more than just a retailer. There's passion here. There absolutely is passion. And you know, that's, that's one of our core values as a company is to always give back to the industry that we're a part of, support the grassroots. So, you know, whether it's a CSRA, the Triple Crown, local races, Kelly Shires, Breast Cancer Foundation, you know, we're we're always in it, always trying to give back to everyone that is such a big part of our industry. Well, you guys call yourselves Canada's power sports leader and I think there's a reason for that. I mean, in this niche, there's no one bigger than Royal Distributing. We're proud to have them on board as the title sponsor of this documentary. They've helped make a lot of projects possible for us at Adrenaline Junkie Prod over the years. So thanks so much. You and I look it. forward to working with you guys for many years to come. Awesome, and thank you. And thank you for everything you're doing for this industry. It's great. Awesome, right back at you, man. We are in the historic town of Bancroft, Ontario. We're about uh, 20 minutes away from where we're heading. So um, this is probably the biggest town around for the next little while. This event takes part in Ontario, Canada, which covers more than 1 million square kilometers, about 450,000 square miles. It's Canada's second largest province, and Ontario contains more than 250,000 lakes, which make up one-fifth of the entire world's fresh water. If you love the outdoors, then Ontario is an amazing place to live and explore. This documentary will only scratch the surface of Ontario's natural beauty. Ooh, yeah. Nice. All right, guys, uh, we're about a minute away. This is so exciting! So we're at the Mayo Community Centre here, uh, MacArthur Mills, Ontario, just outside of Bancroft. 
We are going to register. You're listening to Daker Rally Radio on 90.1 FM. Thank you for tuning in to Daker Rally Radio and welcome to the event. Here you'll find out all the information you need to know about the event and details throughout the day. So here we go. Park your vehicle oh, and get your camping site. We're here. So here we are on the grounds. We just met Lee, the organizer and guy who runs the show at rallyconnect.com. Uh, he organizes all these wicked events and um, essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna get set up we'll get our canopy set up and, and unloaded and then we're gonna meet with Lee we're gonna make a we're gonna have a little interview with him he can fill us in on some info on how these events started what the Dacre is all about and then we're just gonna chill out and wait until registration opens after that it's just hang out party and then hit the trails tomorrow Lee says they're awesome once we got unloaded and set up, we took a quick cruise around base camp to see what was going on. There was already a lot of side-by-sides and more and more people were arriving. We even ran into a few viewers and fans. the guy that makes all this happen. The Rally Connects events are all organized by our friend Lee here, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I've been riding for years and uh, I took over Rally Connects or purchased it about uh, six years ago. And then before that, I volunteered for quite a long time. Um, before that, uh, you know, working on events and helping grow the company and here we are, so yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, when did the Dacre Rally first start? That's a great question. I was thinking about that the other day. Um, it's definitely been over 20 years. Oh, awesome. Yeah, like at the beginning, they did it every other year. Yep. And then um, in the last uh, six or eight years, we started doing it consecutively every cool. year to, uh, to keep it fresh, keep it going. And, yeah, that's awesome. And, and originally it started as a two wheel based event. It, yeah, very much so. Yeah, it was primarily designed for uh, dual sport street legal motorcycles. Cool. Um, and uh, the whole, the original name of it was the, the Paris to, to, to Dacre rally, right? It, and it's, it was a play on words like the Paris to Dakar rally. Gotcha, yeah. So the original guys found this place, Paris, Ontario, but we have no Dakar, Ontario. So we have Dacre, which was close enough. That's awesome. And they did a ride from Paris to Dacre. And then ever since then, it's, it's, it's changed where it's become a bit more hard enduro. Yeah. So opening up to smaller dirt bikes and, and whatnot, uh, green plated bikes. And then now uh, this is their second year introducing ATVs and side-by-sides. So it's really cool to see this event evolve with the popularity of ATVs and side-by-sides growing. It's really cool to see an event that incorporates all of this. And um, the goal here is to show you guys the amount of work that goes into this, the camaraderie and the lifestyle behind an event like this. So hopefully if you're in this area, that in the future, you can come out and you can get involved in the Dacre Rally. Um, check out the Rally Connects website and you can get all the info you need. There's various classes and difficulty scales. So there's something here for everyone, whether you're on two wheels or four, ATV or side by side, it's an awesome time. So Lee, thanks so much for having yeah, us, man. No uh, problem. I mean, it's events like this that <laughs> make Ryan a pleasure, right? I, we couldn't do it without you guys. And yeah, and we couldn't do it without you guys either. So, so it goes both ways and it's awesome to see. So thanks and uh, yeah. we're really looking forward to tomorrow. Now that we've got our machines unloaded, everything's set up, we've had a chance to chat with Lee, we're gonna head on over to the tech inspection. Any serious motorsports event is going to have a tech requirement and a tech inspection. Safety is a cornerstone of these events, and that's how it should be. Any respectful motorsports event will have a technical protocol. Machines have to meet certain baseline specifications in order to compete. This is a challenging event, but the main goal here for everyone, including the organizers, is to enjoy it and have a good time. When bad things happen during an event like this, it can often risk the future of the event moving forward. This event was very well organized and well thought out. They had an in-depth list of things to check on every machine. And you're in uh, gold class? Yes. Good luck, thanks for coming out.
Everybody associated with the Rally Connects crew had a specific task to accomplish. They all took their roles seriously. They were friendly and knowledgeable. Once tech inspection was completed and our machines had the all clear, we were directed towards the registration desk. Sign your life away. Important stuff, right? Yeah. Large and small. Large and small, yeah. Large and small. <laughs> Not many smalls, eh? No. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You're welcome. After signing in, we each got a t-shirt, and then we were off to the GPS station to get the maps loaded on our units. Hey, you made it. What's going on, guys? So obviously an event like this can't happen on its own. Just like we have supporters, team members, friends, and sponsors, an event like this needs them too. So why don't you shout out who's been helping you all these years? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's been multiple companies helping us out over the years and they change all the time. But uh, uh, one that's been around ever since the beginning has been Climb. You know, they've been a wicked contributor towards the sport and towards Rally Connects in this event. And then this year, um, we have Beta Motorcycles Canada that's sponsoring uh, the event and Triple Clamp Moto. That's awesome. Uh, so oh, check sorry, <laughs> and of course Red Bull. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Obviously, right. <laughs> I miss them. Yeah. But um, I mean, where is it Red Bull in motorsports? I days? know. It's such an awesome brand. It, it's so good that they're supporting. Yeah. It. And watching how big Red Bull has gotten over the years, it's. I mean, that's marketing at its finest. It's funny if you think about it. Like back in the day when we were younger, it was either tobacco or liquor companies that were doing the yep. majority, and Red Bull's really filled that gap because they're not really allowed to do that anymore. We were laughing about like cigarette companies and all that stuff earlier yeah. supporting motorsports and how that's disappeared, right? Like, Imagine, I'm gonna finish the Daker and have a nice Demoria halfway through. I'm gonna have a Malboro <laughs> flavor That's country. It. There you go. Um, yeah. So the goal here is get out here, guys. If you ride a side by side, if you ride an ATV, register for this event next year. Um, numbers have been up and down depending yeah. on the years with 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 COVID and all that crap going on. Obviously, it's been a little weird. It's always been like that with this event, right? It, it's a very unique event. It's very, very challenging and it's not for everybody. Some years we get these big influctuations of people yeah. and, and riders and it's awesome. And some years it's just, you know what? This is what we got. And so far it's been a really good year. So, well, let's set a goal and let's make next year one 20, of the best 000. years we've ever had. Yeah, 20,000 riders. <laughs> hey man, sounds like a good time. We might have to go yeah. somewhere bigger. <laughs> we'll worry about that a year after that. Yeah, thing. exactly. Yeah, they'll kick us out. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, thanks Lee, it's been a pleasure, man. Oh, thank you again, man, for thanks. sure. Can you see this? I really, I need a big flat. Total, 628 kilometers. And That's now, not one year of riding. Is that That's what? one day. One day, 24 <laughs> hours or less. I mean, coming from uh, last year's champion, right? I mean, don't be so modest. Look at that, you even got the Trekkit shirt on. You're gonna be on TV, man. That's this guy. <laughs> Once the majority of the tech inspections were completed, we had dinner, and then following that was the driver's meeting. The majority of competitors were here at this point. The energy in the room was a mix of anticipation and excitement. You could hear people telling stories from previous Daker events, as well as discussing strategy. The effort, planning, and organization Lee and his team at Rally Connects puts into each one of these events is mind-blowing. Hey, welcome to the Daker, everybody. How you feeling? Awesome, thanks everyone for coming uh, and supporting the event. It's uh, something at Rally Connects we hold dear to our hearts. So uh, this riders meeting is to be fairly organic. Pretty much gonna leave it open to the floor because I think what's the most important part about this whole meeting is not me just flapping away about the whole course, it's like answering your questions you have or concerns. No question is stupid unless I say it is. <laughs> so br bring them on, we need them. Uh, this event, again, is not a race. This is a GPS challenge, and it is literally a feat between man and machine and mother nature. You're the first ones back here. Um, I really don't care. And usually, the ones that try to go screaming fast, lose. We judge you on every single corner and intersection you miss, okay? And then, we measure that distance. So if you blow through something half a kilometer because you just weren't looking down or whatever, the dust was too much, the guy in front of you, you're trying to pass a race, you're gonna lose the event, and it's gonna take you a lot longer. Complete the entire route and as, as accurately as possible. That's what's gonna get you a tro or get you a, the, the gold, silver medallions. Yeah, ATV, we only have two classes. We got gold and silver. Gold, we are putting the boots to you guys as well. Yep, and I took you through all the hardest ATV trails that this loop has to offer. Ride smart, ride efficient, Take care of your machine, 
there's gonna be lots of rock, lots of stuff that can really break. I'm, I'm begging on breaking your machine and you. So that's why you're here. Okay, good luck. Okay, side by sides. Gold. Yeah, um, you guys got a lot of mileage. There are a few really tight, 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 borderline fit through technical stuff. Um, there's some mud. There isn't a ton. Um, I tend to try to not do that too much on a fence like this, um, but there is, and there's some swampy bits and stuff like that you're gonna have to get through with hidden shit. Um, and some proper, uh, did I say tight stuff? Yeah, in the dark tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's about it's about your first hour, hour and a half in. Yeah. So that that's probably gonna be your tightest stuff, and, if you, and when you're going through there, the don't for a second think, is this gonna be all day? Right? Uh, because it won't be, but it will be enough. Thank you very much to Red Bull Canada. Red Bull Canada is a great supporter of all the motorsports that we do. Awesome job, Red Bull Canada. After the driver's meeting, we had the rest of the evening to prepare the vehicles and ourselves. We had to stock up on fuel, food, gear, everything needed to survive the big day tomorrow. The crew from Life Outdoors was nice enough to let us piggyback off their support van. In an event this long, you need a pit crew and a support vehicle to meet you at all the checkpoints. You need fuel deliveries, parts, and food. Here you see Max from Life Outdoors. He's the general manager there, and then that's Cody in the background. The whole team at Life Outdoors are huge power sports fanatics. What's even cooler is that they're like one big family doing what they love to do together. We spent the rest of the evening hanging out and getting ready. We knew we had a big day ahead of us, but we were all too excited to get to sleep. In only a few hours, we'd be embarking on one of the greatest off-road adventures of our lives. All right, guys, it is the day of the event. It is 3 a.m. It seems people are starting to get up. Uh, I've been up for about 15 minutes, getting the machine all loaded up with um, the camera gear, stuff like that. There's like a continental breakfast, so um, I'm not really taking part in that. Just gonna have a quick coffee. Um, I'm sure in the next few minutes, everyone's gonna get up and you'll hear the machine start firing up. And then we got a four o'clock in the morning start time for the gold series um, for the moto, the ATV, and the side by side. So that's gonna be badass. You excited, Tim? Yeah. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? It's cold. It won't be soon. No, it won't be. I'm layered up good. The General Lee Kitty is ready, as ready as she'll ever be. And the battle wagon is ready. As yeah. long as the machines hold together, I think we will too, right? Are Put her here, man. Hope we all hold together today. It's gonna be freaking epic. I know it's gonna be awesome. I know it is. Why wouldn't it be? We got the dual GPS. Uh, we'll tell you about that later, though. Um, we got the the Montana on the right, the older one, and then we've got the Garmin Overlander on the left there. So we're here at Radio World. I'm here with Lauren, and um, Radio World has been nice enough to team up with us for the Daker Rally. Uh, they're providing us with two wicked Garmin Overlander units, and um, they've been in this industry for quite a long time, and maybe you can tell us a bit about what you guys do and, and what your biggest market is. For sure, yeah, we started out in uh, 1999, and we do all kinds of outdoor gadgets, you know, so everything from these GPSs that you'll be using in the rally to marine electronics, metal detectors, um, you know, you, you name it, we kind of sell it. The trolling motors that are behind us here, all that outdoor stuff and we really specialize in it. We're definitely a specialty shop, very unique in Canada. And uh, yeah, we, we're all passionate here about these different things as well. So I hope that you know really comes across if you do make it into Radio World to check out our products. So the goal here is going to show is going to be to show you guys the potential of a unit like this. A lot of these vehicles come pre-equipped with like Ride Command from Polaris which works really well, but doesn't offer the depth that you might need for an event like this and the flexibility. These units here, um, they're more of a premium product, so you'll get to see how important this is in a situation like this rally that is all basically on this Garmin unit and everything is plotted there and that's how we're gonna know where to go, that's how they're gonna score us and track us. So it'll be really fun getting to use this thing and um, it's really cool to see brands like this supporting the grassroots motorsports and events like this because I mean, without you guys, 
we'd have nowhere to go to get these products. And at the end of the day, us needing these products for events like this helps you out too. For sure, yeah. Right? Grassroots has been such an important part of Radio World, whether it be fishing, metal detecting, and you know, now even getting into this this rally, we're really yeah. excited about it and uh, partnering up with you in the rally to uh, you know even expand that out and, and bring our awareness to, to new customers. And, and hopefully we can you know um, help you guys out uh, with the, the needs you have GPS-wise, mount-wise, communication wise, uh, GoPro wise, we've got all that stuff. Yeah, so whether you're riding an adventure bike, whether you're riding an ATV, a side-by-side, -side, you're boating, any outdoor activity that requires these types of electronics, make sure you check these guys out. They're supporting us, so show them some support. So thank you, hey, really thank appreciate you. it. Good luck in the ride. Thanks, hopefully the weather pull off, yeah, exactly. And uh, luckily these are weatherproof, right? For sure. So yeah. yeah, it'll be great. What's going on, man? What's going on, you ready? You ready for this? I'm very ready. Is the Segway ready? Segway is very ready to go. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah man, ready to rock? Ready to rock, man. Alrighty, let's do it. Guys, we are ready to rock. We're about to hit the start line. Oh yeah. Ready to go, ready to go. Yeah, good luck guys. Yeah, right on. Track it all the way from New Brunswick. That's right. On the Segways. Good luck, man. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Kill it. Thanks. All right, guys, we're here at the start line. Uh, we are ready to rock. Gold class leaving first. Uh, we got four side-by-sides. We got an RS1, a Segway villain, us in the Razor Turbo, and Tim in the Wildcat. And uh, you can see the gold class ATVs are leaving. Everyone else in gold class and the gold class bikes. Look at that. Fun begin. All the gold class side-by-sides are leaving the line. It's about 4.10 in the morning and we've got a long day ahead of us. Right here out of the line, you see a few guys thinking they're gonna pin it to win it. This isn't an event that you win in the first two minutes. First of all, this isn't a race. It's a GPS guided rally. It's scored predominantly on GPS accuracy. The event organizer Lee was quite clear. Historically, those that focus on speed don't score well. The two guys that just passed us a moment ago now blew by the first trail. So at least for now, they're gonna be stuck behind us. It's dark, we're pumped, unfamiliar territory. This is going to be awesome. Awesome terrain ahead of us, both scenic and challenging. But the real truth is, we have no idea what we signed up for yet. The reality of it is, this is a mental challenge between man, machine, and nature. We're around 15 minutes into the rally and we've caught up to the gold class ATVs. All the various vehicles in this event traverse terrain at different speeds, 
they do faster in some areas and slower in others. Also, depending on the vehicle in class, only certain area of the trail system overlap. With the fact that this isn't a race, there's no urgency to really get around these guys. A few minutes won't change anything. But again, you see an aggressive driver behind us trying to push his way up the pack and pass us. Overdriving your machine early in an event like this is never a good strategic move. Also, when you take risks like this, you endanger those around you. If that machine hits us and breaks us, then it's ruined our day as well, even though we have nothing to do about it. Honestly, the smartest thing to do is just let him pass. see him passing those ATVs at a much higher rate of speed than he really needs to be. This could be done in a more controlled fashion and in a much safer way. My goal here is not to trash talk or put that driver down. I really personally have nothing against him, and a lot of these comments were made in the heat of the moment. But there's a proper way to do things, and out of respect for the other drivers, letting them pull over to the side and passing them at a reduced rate of speed is definitely the proper way to handle this. With all of that being said, I'm sure that driver had no ill intentions. He's just out there having a lot of fun, caught up in the moment. He's actually battling the most difficult part of an endurance event like this, and that's pacing yourself and maintaining your machine. In events like this, the goal is always consistency, maintaining a pace that you can hold throughout the entire event. Overdriving can lead to mistakes that can damage your machine, or even worse, hurt you and your passenger. You can't win if you don't finish, and sometimes slowing down really does speed you up. Off-roading is all about reliability. Aside from a well-built and well-maintained machine, driving style has a massive impact. Right? This is Ksenia and I's first real GPS guided event like this, so there is a little bit of a learning curve here. We're learning how to navigate together. Speed up, speed up. all the competitors in the different classes left, the sweeper crew hit the trails to make sure everyone's okay and help anyone that might be broken down or stuck on the trails get back safe. As I mentioned before, there is so much that goes on behind the scenes of an event like this. The stuff you can't see is often the most important. Wouldn't you look at who we caught up to? Trying to put some pressure on him. He fogged up. He's got a full enclosure. Since he's got a full cab enclosure on that machine, when he hit all that water, the steam caused all the windows to fog up and he couldn't see. As a result, he had to stop, let some air in the cabin, and wipe his windows. <laughs> On events like this, I rather not run a full windshield or enclosure because it just causes issues. I rather deal with wiping my goggles.
were getting a little worked up here too. We were struggling a little bit trying to pinpoint our navigation and our cues. You'll see later on in the ride we kind of figured this out and we learned as we went. Keep in mind there's a lot of adrenaline involved here, pressure, we're not actually mad at each other, we're having a blast. It's just a high intensity moment. Here you see us passing that razor yet again. the sections were super tight and overgrown. It made me happy I was riding a 64 inch machine, not a 72. There were a ton of forks in the trail to navigate, and with the dense tree cover, the GPS accuracy wasn't always super tight. It made it easy to miss a fork and go the wrong way. Some of the trails weren't frequently traveled, so it made them easy to miss just off the side of the trail in the darkness. Tight section's cool. GPS, it was tough to see some of the overgrown trails off the main path in the dark. In case you're wondering, and you've never done an event like this or used an off-road GPS, this is nothing like the GPS in your car giving you turn-by-turn -turn directions and telling you exactly where to go. There's a lot of skill involved here. Yeah. mentioned earlier, this event is open to all sorts of different vehicles from adventure bikes to enduros to dirt bikes, ATVs and side-by-sides in various classes from gold, silver to bronze. Since we're competing in a side-by-side -side in the gold class, obviously our experience will be biased towards that setting.
Regardless of what type of machine you ride or what class you'd like to compete in, I highly suggest you check out this event or any other Rally Connects events. They are very well organized and offer all sorts of different difficulty levels. As the Rally Connects team continues to sweep the trails, you can see some of the sections that we've already passed. Obviously, we're moving at a higher rate of speed than they are. What's important to remember though is the volunteers end up riding pretty much every inch of trail that the competitors touch during this event to make sure everyone's okay. just missed a turn here. The GPS accuracy is affected by tree cover, where you are, elevation, all sorts of things. It's not like on the highway where it tells you to make a left turn in 300 meters or something like that. Here, there is a little bit of a gray zone. Sometimes you gotta drive by something to realize, oh wait, the GPS wants you to go to the right or the left, not straight. Some of the guys on motorcycles that are veterans to GPS guided events like this are incredibly accurate with their GPS navigation. We, on the other hand, have a lot to learn. a lot of experience in the Razor, a lot of seat time riding with me and in the outdoors. She's very well equipped to handle this and it's unlike her to feel ill, likely due to the bouncing around, the exhaustion, the lack of sleep, the excitement and having to focus on that GPS while bouncing around is leading to a little bit of motion sickness which is why she felt like she needed to throw up. Being experienced off-roaders, we do pride ourselves in being prepared. We do have some supplies in the back of the Razor that should make her feel better when we get a chance to stop. Nice. It's starting to get a little bit more light out now, which is great for visibility. As you can see, we've caught up to a few more ATVs, and in front of them is Tim and the Wildcat, so we're just putting along the trail here. As we progress into the ride and we get more daylight, you guys will see some beautiful scenery. Nothing too serious. I don't even know how this could have even happened. What? Okay, so that that rotated. This, this came out. Oh, the ball joint came out. I don't even know how this is loose. The upper ball joint came out. No, the upper's still in there. No, but it came out of the splint yeah. assembly. So Did I need... you lock tight everything? <sighs> Your boots off. That's the least of my concerns. Did you lock tight everything when you put it together? Yeah? What? But I don't know why it would come apart. Unless that's a sloppy... His ball joint popped out of the top. It's alright. It's all there. I just gotta pull the machine up. 
I can get it all put back together. As much passion as the riders show, the Rally Connects team shows an equal amount, making these events possible for everyone to enjoy. There's no one else behind us, so we're good. Is it good enough to get going and ride, or is it something you need to like... No, like, we get that back together, I'm good to go. I even have another bolt here. Well, as you saw, Tim has the upper ball joint popped out of Tim's A-arm, so everything's twisted, but it looks like he can get it back together. Uh, and Ksenia's having some motion sickness. I don't think she's used to um, trying to read the GPS while we ride and bounce around like this. And it's a 3 a.m. start, or we got up at three. We slept for like three hours. I got this first aid kit, luckily. We got some methods there to get rid of her motion sickness, hopefully. Tim is gonna swear for a little bit and then hopefully uh, get things fixed and get back on the trail. We gotta get off the trail. You can get around us. Yeah. He broke a ball joint up front. Oh no. Like it just popped out of the spindle, so we should probably be able to fix it. Oh yeah. Having fun? Yeah, man. Oh. Having fun? Yeah, so much fun. Going, 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 going. Going, going. Carry it. You want to see it? There it goes. Be careful it. sitting under there, man. Uh, limited options. How's it been holding? Good. Good? Very good. You have Loctite? Because if you don't, it's just going to do the same thing. No, I do not have Loctite on me. I do. Oh, you do? Of course I do. Okay, grab it. Like this happens. Hey, nice. Nice walk, eh? Oh, I got, got my steps in. That's a f***ing How far ahead are you? A decent amount. Well, well, I didn't want to cut backwards. I was worried in case it hit you? someone coming backwards. Did the other guys tell you they were just blowing by him, so I stopped him. I was like, is everyone good back there? He's like, uh, no, they're broken. So I was like, ah. I was afraid to turn around and drive backwards because yeah. these trails are so tight. I was like, I'm just going to tuck it in the bush and make sure they're good. And you zip tie for that boot. What let go, Tim? The upper ball joint pull. Pulled right out. The problem is I can't remember what I put in what tube. <laughs> and it's not in this one. You got your miscellaneous nuts and bolts on you? Yeah, I just put them back. What, it's broken? Switch, switch this one out. Is it broken? No, she's just shiny. Stripped. All good. All good. All good. Awesome. Yeah. Can it be longer? Yeah, it can be longer. The speed is just crazy. Oh, relentless. I specifically stocked up with you lock tight before this trip. So. Gotta get the thread lock open. Nice to keep a blade handy. For multiple reasons. It's just what happens sometimes. Especially when you ride with Tim. <laughs> Can't wait till he sees this. Is the other side good? Did you torque him? That side is good. She fixed him? Yes. We'll check on it when we get to the next road. And then I'll make well, judging by the way that other bolt looked, I mean, as long as the threads on the nut are good. Can't get nut in there, there's not enough room. What do you mean? How does the other bolt go in? There's no nut on there? There's no nut. It, it has a thread itself. In it the spindle? It threads into that spindle, yeah. That's where Yes, it is. And now that's what's... So you got to drill them out and... Go bigger. And put or just bolts. buy a whole new spindle. So it's looking like Tim's deciding he might be tapping out. Pretty good place to do it, actually. Not too far. I got Not enough too far. to get back, no problem. So far, the damage report on the battle wagon is that we're down one rock plate. Seal savers are doing their thing. Segway's working good so far, eh? It's working off. Happy super, with it? Super happy with it. Cool, it's nice to see it out here on like a real ride. Yeah, low gear works amazing through all the rocky yeah, stuff. Yeah, the clutching feels good? The clutching feels good low. Did you guys do anything to the clutching? Nope, stock clutching on there. Okay, cool. Is this a 64 or 72? This is a 64 inch. Nice, you yep. would be hating your life. Oh yeah. If it was a 72. Yep, it's perfect. Cool, man. Looks good, too. So we're just getting back on the trail after our first little issue here. Luckily, we managed to get it together at least enough to get it off the trail here, guys. Uh, Tim's down in the spirits a bit. I mean, obviously, a lot of prep work goes into this event, and then you have a stupid issue like that. 
which seems to be caused by kind of a flawed spindle design from uh, Arctic Cat. And there's some slop in his spindle bolts that he didn't catch. So we'll get him to a road and then he'll probably end up calling her quits. I'm gonna let him go first. This is off-roading. This is what happens regularly. This is why I bring so much crap. I've said it before. Sometimes when you save someone else's day, you end up saving your own ride. You gotta add the positive energy. So hopefully when I'm down on my luck, someone helps me. Wicked trails. It's about 6, 10 in the morning. Um, we've been on the trail for about three hours. We lost over 45 minutes there. So um, everyone else is likely ahead of us now. The visibility is much nicer now. Cool downhill section here. The Megabyte tires are working great. We got the, the Tusk Megabytes in a 34 on here. The machine feels great with the shock therapy springs on the 34s. Um, it's really riding real nice. sun's out, you can get a better glimpse of the terrain around us. Here we're in a ravine, a lot of tight sections, ups and downs, and this is very similar to some of the local trails and terrain that we traverse at home. As we move forward with the ride, we'll see a lot more variety in the terrain, which is one of the aspects that makes this ride so enjoyable. see Tim behind us here in the Wildcat. It's unfortunate he's having those issues because he put a lot of work into that machine before this ride, tore it all down, replaced all the suspension components, got new tires, all sorts of stuff. If you've been paying attention to the previous uploads, you'll see how that Arctic Cat has evolved. In an event with so many different machines, so many different riders, and such varied terrain, it's no surprise that Tim wasn't the only one experiencing technical problems. The team from Trekit were running into some issues of their own on their segways, predominantly related to tires and punctures. The terrain was already starting to take a toll on riders and machines. Remember you said up and then down? Some of these sections the trail isn't very visible and it almost looks like there's multiple routes to choose from. It's important to stick to the right one or you'll lose points. It's not always easy to tell which one's which on the GPS. I don't know if they're stopped up there. I'm gonna wait. It looks like it's Max and they segue now. Let's see what's wrong here. It's my turn to run. What's up? The snorkel pipe burnt, but we're good. We got on who? Job. The intake pipe, but we're good. Oh, <laughs> we're so we jinxed it. We're golden, we're good. You're good? It's good. You duct taped? That's that. Did you duct tape it? Nope. How are yours? Good? Good, yep. Yeah. Ma'am, it, it feels great out here. So cool. Yeah. Okay. It's good, it's good. I, I went too far. As 
As you heard, one of the snorkel pipes that they built for the Segway villain had gotten too close to the exhaust, all this riding, um, this being the first real test of their snorkel setup, and the villain being a new machine with not really any aftermarket support, uh, these are the situations where you find the, the flaws and weaknesses in a setup. Max and Cody were easily able to move the pipe out of the way a little bit and tape up the damage. We made our way through that tight congested section of trail we started off on this morning to a more open section of trail here. This rally consists of 11 separate stages. Keep in mind we are only on the first one so far. We've already got a lot of riding under our belt for the day and we're not even 10% through. It's tricky right? Yes. Oh this is an awesome section.
looks like Team Trekkit just cannot catch a break here. More issues. Wayfinding, wayfinding. You're not sure, you're not sure which way to go? Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh. So this morning we started in the dark. Mac was in front, he had the light bar, GPS. So all of a sudden his GPS decided to, I don't know, be poopy. So I went in the front without a light bar. I'm driving along, just piss cutting her and decided to go off a ledge and pop this tire and that tire. That has two plugs in two different locations. I have a rip in the sidewall and a plug in, a, in the other side. So both sides have plugs and then the back one's leaking too. By golly, we're gonna try to make it. And right now we are stopped because we don't know where the hell we are. Aside from tire issues, Team Trek is having some navigational problems here. As we mentioned before, it's not as easy as it sounds to follow this GPS when there's so many different trails and paths, it's easy to get disoriented and take a wrong turn. As the Rally Connects crew keeps scrubbing the trails for lost or stranded riders, we keep pushing forward as well. The trail's constantly changing and the terrain bouncing back and forth between tight and open, muddy sections and road sections. There wasn't a single time during this event when we were bored. Off-road vehicles like side-by-sides, ATVs, dirt bikes, they all let you explore so much amazing terrain you'd have difficulty seeing on foot. That's one of the beauties of this sport. All right, we just finished part one out of 11. We just updated to track number two on the side-by-side -side gold boys here are updating your GPS. So I don't know how long until the actual next stop. I don't either. This, that's where track one ended. Yeah, so now you go to track two. There's some good mileage here. Well, you outlasted the kitty cat, eh? I did. Go segue. Woo! <laughs> We're on number two, right? We're right just now? on number two now. We just started right here. Yeah. Cool. As you can see, Tim and the Wildcat is no longer with us. The Daker claimed another victim. Aside from the spindle issue, once we got on this main stretch of road, Tim's exhaust manifold basically cracked in half. It was a sign that it was time to throw in the towel. Since we were just off a main road, it was a smart place for him to stop, contact the Rally Connects crew, and wait to be rescued. This event this long is incredibly demanding on both the mental and physical well-being of the competitors. In addition, it's also incredibly demanding on the equipment. The amount of abuse these machines take during an event like this is unbelievable. With that being said, it's totally worth it. The self-fulfillment and satisfaction you get from an event like this, especially if you manage to complete it, is extraordinary. It's an absolutely amazing experience and one you will never forget. As an added bonus, you get to experience some incredible terrain and some beautiful sights.
commenting on how many trees are down and you're probably noticing it on the sides of the trails. This area experienced some record-breaking winds and weather just prior to this event. The Rally Connects crew had to work overtime to get all these trails cleared for the event to go on. Going, I just can't cook like that because as soon as throw, if you want to throw one can in, you have two cans, right? Yeah, if you want to throw one in and I'll look at the route sheet in the meantime. All right, like it just cut out on me there because uh, when I corner hard with the empty tank almost, it's sloshing and then it's it's leaning out and backfiring or cutting power. So, leg one 133k. Uh, I can check how much we are at. We have to go 40 kilometers more. end of this map we should be there yeah at the checkpoint yeah yeah how do you like it so far it's awesome yeah yeah it's a little tight in some spots out there but overall pretty wicked look we have same spin trail same same spin trail <laughs> Julie has the same could have all been matching how do you like it so far I love it is it holding working. business machine working really well yeah loving it good how are you guys doing Good. Good? Yeah. Right Finally, morning sickness passed. Yeah. <laughs> not, the, not the morning sickness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> motion sickness. Yeah. Motion the sickness. Motion sickness. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, finally, morning sickness fa uh, passed. I'm okay with that type of morning sickness. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not morning sickness, it's a motion sickness. Yeah. <laughs> It's because it's sloshing around so much when you're kicking it out. 
because mine started cutting out. Like I got gas. I, I bet I could easily go another 30K. It's just when I'm hitting the whoops and like yeah, spinning yeah. around, it's, it's just not letting me. It cut out on me twice. These Roto packs are awesome. They're super tough and they, they're not vented. They don't swell. Can't go on a trip like this without fuel. Not in a pig like the Razor. <laughs> you fueling up too? Just might as well, stopping. Yeah. I'm gonna fill this jerry can up too when I... You're collecting some mud, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. How's your suspension feel through here, Max? Be a little softer. First time running no sway bars though, so that's a but the rear's hooked up, right? Yeah, yeah. The rear yeah so you get that weird kind of like the front wants to sway, but then the rear kind of stops it. Yeah, I'm still getting used to it. It is a little weird. I'm gonna tighten up my my shocks a bit, I think, because we're doing mostly this high speed stuff. Dude, the shock therapy spring. Game changer. You can't even you can't even begin to understand how insanely like this thing would have been so choppy on these trails. Weather's perfect. So nice. Oh, it's awesome. All right, so uh, we're fueled up and now we're gonna keep cruising. We got about 20-ish kilometers to the first kind of main checkpoint stop with the crew. Um, so we're just kind of gonna make our way there without stopping anymore. Uh, it's 133 kilometers to that section. I think we've gone 111-ish since we left. Did I hear right that you guys blew a ball joint? Not yours, but... Tim, uh, it popped out of the spindle assembly, and then we fixed it, and then his exhaust broke off the manifold, and it sounded like a tractor. So, uh, yeah, he's out for the count. Alrighty, so uh, we made it to checkpoint number one, I believe, and uh, we're just gonna have a quick lunch, fuel up the machines, and uh, keep rolling. We're about to start track three, so this is the end of track two. Uh, there's a nice lunch here. Similar. You're not even that dirty. Look. Oh, it's just from your helmet, your goggles. We are done at checkpoint one, full of fuel, full of food, ready to start stage three. See you guys. stages of the event were the longest ones and took the most time to get through. After taking a breather at checkpoint one, we are feeling energized and ready to hit the trails again. The sun is out and the weather is perfect, we couldn't ask for better riding conditions than this. And we're off to great start. We miss a turn or we can't find one. The GPS says there should be a trail off the side here, but we can't see it. Right there. I think it's that one.
At times we think we're on the trail, but according to the GPS, we aren't always where we're supposed to be. We are lost. No, we're not. Where the f is it? I think we should just go down that road. But no, that road goes completely the opposite way. Yeah. But like, it looks like a lot of people went this way and probably did what we did. It's got to be this way, but like, when we when when we go that way, like it's. Like it's like we're like we're off we're off the course more than we've been, but like there's no other f***ing road. So it's got to be this way. Huh? Do you want to just keep going that way and see what happens? I think we don't have a choice. There's nothing back that way. Okay. If there's nothing that way, then there's no point. Okay. okay. Then it wouldn't make sense because we're on the route until yeah. about here. Okay, I'll turn around. Let's just, last time, let's see what happens. This is confusing. This takes us off track in a second. You think good on yours? Yes. Okay. Are you still on the road or are you off it now? Now I'm off it. Right where we turned in, it's exactly where it shows you the way. Yeah, but then it takes you off track again. Maybe it's just, cause like you can't go that way, it's water. And then, this, this I guess. Road, we only went a little bit further, so there's no trail. No, so like. Then on, hopefully this road turns back around. Yeah, cause we're going like this and it's telling us to go here. Yeah. So we'll but there's nothing here. here. Yeah. Let's, Let's go, go forwards then. Yeah. Okay. a few minutes but we put our heads together and did figure out where we were going. It seems we're back on track for now. Oh nice. It's about 11.45 and the Rally Connects crew has gotten to Tim. They've arranged for a trailer to come get him and take him safely back to base camp. Unfortunately, in this case, the Daker conquered him and he'll have to come back and try again. It's evident he's disappointed, but that's the way off-roading is sometimes. Kitty's down and out. Even the sections where we weren't on the main trail and we had to do a little bit of road riding were very scenic. There was a lot of nice places to see. We drove through a lot of small northern towns and communities and it was just an awesome way to explore the surrounding area and visit places we likely would not have seen otherwise. We made note of a few key areas and set some goals to return and explore them some more in the future. There's a lot of great things to enjoy and explore in this part of Ontario. Whether you like fishing, boating, kayaking, hiking, camping, or any other outdoor activities, Ontario is an amazing place to enjoy them all. Ontario has some of the most fresh water in the world and some amazing lakes. Just take a look at this scenery. The amazing scenery alone is a good enough reason to take part in the Dacre Rally. The sheer amount of experiences this one event offers is amazing. Everyone's here. We made great time over the last few sections of trail and started catching up to the other competitors. Here you see us completing stage 3 and pulling into checkpoint number 2, which is conveniently located at a gas station. Well, we finally caught up with everyone. Yeah. We're going to fill up the razor and have a quick bite to eat. I wonder how those ATV guys are doing. Oh, wow. No, it's a nice new one, but it's hot when you stop, eh? Yes. I was just thinking that. I'll pull up there with the rest of them. Yeah. It's time to quickly check in with our support van, regroup, and hit the trails again. When Tim broke down in the morning, every single other side-by-side -side passed us, and we weren't expecting to catch up to everyone so quick. 
Checkpoint number two, we're just about to start track four. When we decided to take part in this event, we had agreed that the main goal here would be to finish. We wanted to complete the entire event in the allotted amount of time. If we could get a competitive score and podium, we thought that would be a bonus, but by no means was that something we were focused on. We were here for the experience. some of the other competitors at the checkpoint really sparked our thirst for competition. We ran across a few other ATVs taking part in the Dacre. We weren't sure what class they were in, but it looked like they had missed a turn too and were trying to double back and find their route. Since all the classes follow different routes, it's not as easy as just seeing another machine and following them. up to another group of gold class side-by-sides, so we knew we were closing in on the pack. At this point, our competitive nature was kicking in, and we thought, hey, we still got a chance. Let's see if we can get ourselves to the front of the group. So we all agreed we'd kick up the pace a little bit without overdriving the vehicle. We still had a really long way to go, so we didn't want to make any silly mistakes or damage anything. It was important to remember that like we had mentioned earlier, this event isn't scored on who gets across the finish line first, but GPS accuracy. So going too fast and blowing through corners wasn't going to benefit us. So guys, how's it going? Excellent, you? Great, man. How's the trails? Perfect. perfect. The weather's perfect. You're good. We're numbers over here. Just go, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm holding it 7,000 RPM out of this. 7,000 is all you get? Like, just in that last, like, two minutes. It won't go above it? It could be a belt. It could be a belt, but that's fair. Yeah. If it gets, if it gets worse, we'll pull over and check it out. They have gas here, too. Uh, I think we're good for gas, eh? I'm pretty, I'm not, I'm still full, pretty much. Yeah, Hey, it's five we're doing now, right? Yeah. Okay, ready to rock? I don't know if you guys are yeah, good to go. Thanks, man. No problem, guys. I think it's this way. That's weird. Yeah, it's this way. Checkpoint 3 marked the end of stage 4 and the start of stage 5. Since we were still doing good for fuel at this point, we decided to save time and we just keep moving forward. The next checkpoint, number 4, is the lunch stop with a mandatory 20 minute break. Since the break is mandatory, we decided to kick up the pace, knowing we'd get a chance to rest once we got there. Although it wasn't a race to the finish, we were making good time and catching up to the other competitors, so at this point we had set a personal goal that it would be really cool if we could be the first gold class side-by-side -side to complete the entire event and cross the finish line first, while also still paying attention to GPS accuracy. right on the fork instead of left. On the GPS, sometimes it's hard to see whether you actually need to go left and right on these trails until you've gone the wrong way and then you notice your track is off. So now we need to double back and try taking the other direction at the fork. It was the fork in the road, went the wrong way. The G 
GPS accuracy can be affected by signal strength and tree cover, weather, things like that. So sometimes when there's a fork in the road and the two trails are side by side and the GPS accuracy is only a few feet, it's easy to not know which way to go until you start traveling down that one route and then you notice that your GPS isn't lining up with where you're supposed to be. We lost about five minutes getting off track there and that was an opportunity for some of the other competitors to get in front of us again. We managed to get back on track pretty quick. Here you can see a few guys on dirt bikes taking a little breather before they continue down on the trails. We were actually surprised that we weren't running into more bikes, ATVs, and other side-by-sides on the trails here, but because of all the various routes, it probably kept traffic down. This is actually a great sign because it means the event has a lot of room to grow and has the potential to host a lot more competitors in the future without congestion. We've already had so much fun today taking part in this event. If you think you'd enjoy challenging yourself and your machine in an event like this, then you should register for the Dacre Rally next year. The biggest downside to riding in a larger group in situations like this is the dust. Leading is always better for that because you're out front and you're ahead of the dust cloud. To the left there you see the trail we should have gone down. Another downside to not leading is you're not really paying that much attention to the GPS sometimes and you're hoping the person in front of you knows where they're going. So if they go the wrong way, so do you. And here you see us realizing that we are not on track anymore. I go to the front to lead the way. Somehow early on in the day we got unofficially elected to just lead the pack. The benefit is less dust, the downside is you need to constantly be on guard paying attention and concentrating on the route. When you're following you can focus more on just the riding and you don't have to be concentrating on the GPS so much. Being out front for the majority of the ride did help us get better acquainted with the GPS and learn a lot. By this point of the ride we were feeling a lot more comfortable navigating the trails. The skills we learn here on this event will definitely help guide us on future rides taking advantage of the skill set we're developing with these GPS units. This will also help us be more efficient and accurate if we choose to take part in a few future Dacre Rally or similar GPS guided event. now. We've been riding for just under 12 hours and we're almost at checkpoint 4 which is the lunch break and the halfway point of the rally. At this point we looked at each other and said, we've been riding for 12 hours and we're only halfway done? What the heck did we sign up for? At this point we were getting a little exhausted and it was a perfect time for a lunch break. Last 
checkpoint, we were gone by the time they got there. Really? Yeah, we, we, we were an hour ahead of them. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. We are going to check you guys in, 20 minute mandatory lunch yep. break. Uh, once he scans you, you can just park the vehicles up over here to the right. Sandwiches are in here, we got lots of Red Bull and cool. water. He's my pit crew. Hmm? He's, that's a pit crew. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to restart it. We even, we are even having a pit crew. Pit crew? The crew chief. <laughs> I don't my, think I'm the chief. My but. ESL. <laughs> Ksenia and her ESL. Yeah, you got to practice your English. I'm teaching her redneck English. <laughs> teaching her redneck. <laughs> Is it yummy? Yeah, you know what? They feed us really well at this yeah. event. There's a prep lunch halfway here. And we finally made it. It also gives you something to look forward to. <laughs> a reason to survive and continue. And then there was a good dinner yesterday. So yeah, we had, video. we had the lasagna. My first lasagna ever. It was that, yeah, it's actually pretty good. It's good. And then I, I don't know what's for dinner tonight. But I'm sure it'll be all right. I think we prepared too much food for this event. We've eaten a lot of it. There's not that much left. Hmm? There's grapes left and a sandwich or two, but we ate through a lot of it. I'm glad we had it. You never know what's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. You might get stranded out there. I wonder what Tim's doing. How do you like the tires? Remember the Tusk um, Mega Bites? They're great. Yeah, I really like them. <laughs> They're a tough tire. I really like them. They work well in all conditions. I trust them out on the trails here. They're working well. Run a little more pressure than I usually do. And I think that was a really smart choice because we were getting some good speeds. Are you ready for the next half of the day? Yeah, so we're halfway. We just had lunch. Um, now we're gonna hit track seven of 11. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's rock and roll. We're back on the trails after lunch starting stage 7 of 11. Stage 7 started out really confusing because when we got on the trail here it opened up to like 6 or 7 different paths and we didn't know which one to take. They're all so close together and they're not all on the GPS so it's easy to get confused. this way. 
the camera here, you can see that there's no really clear-cut trail. There's multiple paths that look like you could go down them, and we went down two or three of them, and then the GPS started going off track. But then we finally managed to work our way over here, and it looked like we were en route with the GPS. We spent a good 10 minutes going back and forth, spinning around in circles here. As you can see, we weren't the only ones that were confused here. Now that we're back on track after lunch and past the halfway point, we need to remember we still have a hell of a long way to go. We still have over 10 hours of trail riding, and a large portion of that is going to be in the dark again. We're getting more exhausted and we need to try and stay focused. During long, exhausting events like this, sometimes the best thing you can do is actually just keep moving. When you stop, you get exhausted, you overthink, and it's easy to make mistakes because when you get back onto the trails, it takes a little while to get back into the groove, get back into the zone of things. Now that we're so far into the event and we're doing well, we need to focus on maintaining our machine and not overdriving. Silly mistakes can lead to damage that can knock us out of this event before we get to the finish line. The closer to the end you get, the more devastating a mistake becomes. Where's the trail? This is the checkpoint, yeah. We're not getting through here, so. I don't think we can go that way. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. We gotta go back to, up to the trail there, eh? So as Ksenia pointed out, we did find a beautiful lookout here, but there's no way to go forward. However, there was a trail just off to the side of this, so we're gonna try and go down there and see if that solves our problem. But if you could see the GPS, it does show that we're directly right on the trail and there's supposed to be a waypoint right in front of us. As we mentioned earlier, and as you had seen in the other clips, there was some sections of trail that were blocked off due to the wind damage, so we did have to bypass them. This might just be another one of those. How did they end up behind us? They took a wrong turn. out that other trail was the right way to go and now we're back on track again and as you could see that other group of side-by-sides wound up behind us again also uh, meaning that they likely may have taken a wrong turn somewhere else because they were ahead of us what we learned is the second you think you're on track and you stop paying attention you blow by a corner or you take the wrong route you're also probably noticing the razor has gotten a little squeakier
This was another one of those spots where you couldn't really tell on the GPS whether it wanted to keep going straight or go off to the right until you went down one path and then you could see the GPS catch up. There's a slight bit of lag sometimes on these trails that are really close together and it makes things difficult. I think it's the wrong way again. It's f hard. Oh, like you think we have to cross that creek? I thought so, and then it looked like the arrow was pointing to go this way, and then as soon as we went this way, the arrow did a like 180. Okay, so we gotta try to turn around. Yeah. So that was annoying, we wasted a good 15 minutes, we got pinned down that tight trail and it was hard for all three of us to turn around there. The guys behind us weren't too sure which way to go either, so they waited and they made the smart call to see what we did. Commit and bounce it right up.
this way. If after all this mileage and all this abuse, all we develop is a squeaky shock bushing, I'm more than cool with that. As long as the rest of the machine holds together, and we hold together, I can deal with a little squeaky bushing. We've been riding for quite a while now since leaving checkpoint four at lunch. At this point, we're not overly exhausted. We're feeling like we got our second win. The sun is starting to set, and the views just keep getting better and better. We need to keep the pace up, because we need to get to checkpoint 5 before 7pm, or we won't be allowed to continue in the rally. We ran into a few guys who had a flat tire and were changing a wheel. We made sure they were okay and had everything they needed before hitting the trail again. They were also in a bit of a hurry, because they too needed to make it to that same checkpoint for 7pm. We're gonna make it. I can't, we can't be that far. I thought it was 50 kilometers from back there. We gotta be close because we keep thinking it's soon, it's soon, it's soon. You having fun? Oh, yeah. We're gonna pull over and let you guys go ahead. Thank you. Okay, Julian. Go. We're gonna make it. Because we're pushing our luck, we're getting there. We said our goodbyes, wished everyone luck, and hammered down. Not making it to the checkpoint on time wasn't an option. We didn't know it at the time, but we were only about 15 minutes away. Our support crew wasn't meeting us at this checkpoint, they would be waiting for us at the next one. We quickly checked in and headed right back for the trails. Is it back on the highway? Yeah. Yeah, turn right. checkpoint with time to spare and the guys we ran into that had the tire problems were right behind us. When we left the checkpoint we had to double back just a little bit and then we linked back onto the trails. With no more time constraints, all we have to focus on now is sticking to the trail and making sure our machines hold together. across a handful of these rough, rocky, bumpy sections throughout the ride, and I was thinking how awesome it is to have a machine with all the suspension travel, the clearance, and the big tires, because it should not be this comfortable driving over terrain like this at the speed we're traveling. I personally would not want to do this on a motorcycle or on an ATV, especially not some of the older models. This stage had a lot of higher speed open sections and we made really good time. The sun was slowly starting to set and the views were stunning. We made it to the next checkpoint and fuel stop where our pit crew was waiting for us. We also caught up to some of the other competitors at this location.
the section, like one or two of them seem pretty short, and then like uh, one or two of them seem pretty f long. Like well, the yeah, fact. They're, and their timing they give us on the map isn't right. So like yeah. the one time we hung back to see if we could see Mac, because it said you guys wouldn't be there for two hours, and then we got there like 15 minutes before you should have been there, and you had passed an hour ago. I was I, like, that's really wrong. Your timing I is think, way um, it, like I said, if it wasn't for the stops, I think we're covering ground a lot faster than they anticipate. Gotcha. We can go over some of those like really rough sections at like 50. Right. On an ATV, you'd be like losing your brains at 20, right? Right. Like, I can imagine. We haven't seen on any ATVs all day, like from our group since the morning. Uh, there's a couple ATVs ahead of you guys. Yeah? yeah. You're going to keep making it. What's See that? you the next stop. You'll make it. Oh, yeah, we will. Come back. Be safe. See you in 50 kilometers. See you when we see you. See you Ready? So we took a 20 minute break, fueled up, got some food, changed up some gear, got on our clear goggles, and now we're ready to start stage nine. Seeing those other machines in front of us just motivated us to keep pushing it harder. Even though we still have a long way to go, we are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're also super excited because we're about to enter Algonquin Park and there's sure to be a lot of stunning scenery. Riding those whooped out sections is a lot of fun. In a machine like this, actually, the faster you go, the smoother the whoops get. You could see us bouncing up and down there, getting a good giggle. Now, as the sun's setting, we're making our way into Algonquin Provincial Park. So just take a moment and look at that scenery. to say filming in these conditions is difficult at the best of times. If you're familiar with other content then you'll know that from time to time we do struggle with the camera gear and it's just a result of the environment we're working in. Unlike a high budget Hollywood production you're essentially seeing the polar opposite of that here. You're seeing how much work goes into an event like this not just taking part in it but also documenting and filming it all along the way. TV guys, you're seeing the whole crew and they're sitting in this machine right now. You're witnessing the director, editor, producer, film crew, sound crew, marketing department, event competitors, real world power sports enthusiasts forced to be jacks of all trade to make this work. That's the trailer going down. Driving through some of these really scenic sections, we wished we had the time to stop and take in the views a little bit more. Hopefully in the future, we can plan another trip out here and maybe camp for a few nights.
so many beautiful lakes off the side of the trail here, and the reflection from the sunset was stunning. We were creeping towards some tighter sections of trail now, and it was also starting to get much darker. We caught up to a solo biker here, and he was nice enough to let us go around him. At this point we were feeling reinvigorated and motivated. We were making really good time and catching up to the rest of the pack really made us push forward and keep a good pace. We knew there wasn't too many more machines in front of these guys so we really could see that goal of completing the whole event and also maybe crossing the finish line as the first gold class side by side. up getting around that other pack of side-by-sides and we kept pushing forward. As you can see it's getting a lot darker now the sun has set so things are gonna get interesting. If you have any experience riding you know it is a whole different world out there in the dark. It's like the trails completely change and evolve when the sun goes down. Just hitting the trail we just fueled up and we are ready to rip it's uh just before 10 o'clock we've been riding for 17 hours although the last section isn't incredibly long it's actually a very tight and technical part of the route. On top of that, it's pitch black and we're tired. dust cloud and we waited for about five minutes and no one showed up 
there's been no crazy trail for the last little while. It's mostly just this wide, this open kind of very easy trail. So uh, we, we waited about five minutes, maybe six minutes, and we decided to double back. So it's been about 10 minutes since we see them, maybe 15. So hopefully they don't have any serious issues. I'm hoping it's just like a flat tire or something. What is it? It's either a clutch or a bottom end, I'm not sure yet. Are you kidding me? We almost survived. I know. So we're, we're checking clutch to make sure it's not clutch. To make sure that, because you know how they have the same kind of sound if you don't want to leave it running? Like that. <laughs> yeah, like the clutch could have shaken itself apart, right? Yeah. We got another 65 kilometers. Yeah. Be a good tow. Okay, I'm going to start it. There's that light too. Let me know what you think. Whoa, 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 whoa. Clutch. Primary. Shot? Shot. Okay. That sucks though. Um, just out of nowhere? It just popped on you? Uh -huh. Yeah. We got. We should tow you to a main road at least. There's a main road about two minutes up. Yeah. I'm guessing we're only a few minutes by truck away from camp. You want to start it? I wouldn't think it's the bearing. It's not like a bearing noise, it's like a clattering. Like something's jingling around there that shouldn't be. Yeah. This is just another case of off-roading. And it's what happens after so many hours of abuse and so much mileage in one day. It's no surprise that the machines are starting to show some signs of wear. Just when you think you're on the home stretch, this happens. There's some machines coming. Oh, so much for being first. We were gonna be the first ones back. The clutch blew up. Hey? The clutch blew up. Oh no. Well, we were gonna be the first ones back. <laughs> and then off roading happened. Max and Cody made a plan to tow back to the main road and take the main roads back to the base camp. They said it was my job to hunt down the rest of the pack in the side-by-side -side class and beat them to the finish line. At this point, I was honestly in tunnel vision. All I was focused on was moving forward and not letting the guys we had just passed a few minutes ago catch up to us. At this point, I just didn't want to make any silly mistakes. I didn't care how much more abuse I put the machine through, as long as it held together till the finish line. We're used to sketchy bridges though, right? Yeah. I've got to admit that that last 30 to 40 minutes seemed like forever. We knew we were close, but we just couldn't get there. I was actually pushing the machine really hard, and we were making some good time here. The finish line was so close we could taste it, and our excitement and adrenaline was really kicking in.
We did it guys, we completed the rally. We did the whole course in the allotted amount of time with no mechanical issues whatsoever. We were also the first gold class side by side to cross the finish line, which to us was just a personal goal we had accomplished. The feeling of accomplishment after completing this event is next to none. I've never ever felt this good after finishing an off-road or any other motorsports event and I've taken part in many. The next group of side-by-sides was only about 10 minutes behind us and everyone was super excited crossing the finish line knowing they had survived the longest day. We survived. They survived. Yeah, we slept for like four and a half hours. Yeah. I feel good, but I'm beat. I feel pumped, we did it. I feel really accomplished. Oh man. Ksenia was saying like, she can't believe what that razor went through and it's fine. Yeah, what a wicked experience. Mm -hmm. You know what, Who, that, that's why they're always like, hey guys, if you finish, you win. It's so true. Mm -hmm. If you can get through that in 24 hours, it's not about the difficulty of the terrain because I'll tell you, the terrain itself was not difficult compared to what we're used to riding. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. it. It was insane. It was amazing. What an experience. So many emotions. Yeah. <laughs> to I, uh, it's it's an unforgettable thing. Mm -hmm. I hope you can feel the energy in the video because mm -hmm. um, it was just amazing time. And everyone here is super nice, super friendly, yeah. super approachable. I didn't even feel the the, the spirit of competition. Honestly, like, it was very helpful. Like yeah. like all of the off roading mm -hmm. we do, everyone's helping each other. And the morning after. It's so quiet as everyone is dead and <laughs> sleeping probably still. I heard people coming back after 4 o'clock still, over 24 hours. Honestly, just incredibly impressed with this machine and how capable it was and the abuse that it went through. These tires took a ass kicking. I was so hard on these tires, brand new when we left, and man, the thrashing and the hits that they took, the impact some of these fronts took was relentless. No flats, nothing, no damage by the looks of it. What a tough, tough tire. Highly recommend these Tusk Megabytes. The suspension components, all that Super ATV, heavy duty componentry. The axles, everything held together great. We took some big hits. I hit the A-arms a couple times hard and no damage. Our storage tubes and all the gear we brought all came in handy. The uh, back tires took a beating from brand new to, well, abused. We took some life off of them for sure. Well worth it. The seal savers did their job too. What a wicked time, this Razorback off-road cargo rack with spare tire holder, wicked to have. Definitely take advantage of the, the roto packs. We needed them. The clutching felt great. Now it's the, the fact that WR Performance Product is one of our documentary sponsors. It's probably great because this thing is, it's not covered in mud, but it is, it's like, it's fit. We are, we're at the WR Performance Products manufacturing facility, head office, headquarters, whatever yep. you want to call it. And these are the guys behind the scenes that, that run the show. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves, tell us a little about your product, how you got started, and what you do. Yeah, sure. So my name is Donald. I'm Brett. And uh, we are WF Performance Products. Um, our product line, it's, it's kind of interesting actually. So we, when we originally designed these products, they weren't um, intended to be sold. Uh, he was racing GNCC. Yep. Um, every weekend traveling all over the U.S. and uh, just had some major problems cleaning, uh, <laughs> which I think most of us do. We can all relate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. So we luckily we have some connections with the chemical, um, I guess, more like an engineer, right? Uh, so they were taking this product to the test. We told them, "Hey, this is a problem. These are major issues that we're having. We're not really embracing the be on for world. We need something that works." And uh, after a bunch of rounds of testing, we found some formulas that worked extremely well. Kind of got to the point where we, we didn't really have much of a choice. We, we had to make a business around yeah. it. The feedback was too good. Uh, stuff was working 
exactly who wanted it to from the outset. I was and all so, friends telling them how great the stuff was when yeah. I first started using Hand it. Hand bottles out. Yeah, 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 yeah we did Hand sample bottle, and yeah. all the feedback was awesome. Well, it's cool to see. It's cool to see like it's based out of necessity, right? Yeah. You developed a product around your needs yeah. because you couldn't find something that worked. And I mean, realistically, some of the best products out there are based on the same grounds, right? Yeah. You needed something, it wasn't there, we made it. Yeah. So it's cool to see your products based on R&D. This isn't just dish soap in a bottle. Well, no, yeah. and we knew we couldn't just come up. Well, we weren't looking for just another wash. There's yeah. washes out there. Yeah, we were looking yeah. for an off-road wash. And it actually speeds cleaning up for side-by-side -side users. Yeah. And breaking down some of the heavier stuff too, because like I hated when I had to use a wash and then go and scrub after. I wanted to take as much out of the equation as possible on that and get as close to a touchless wash as possible. And I feel like we did that with the total wash. Um, especially in like the side-by-sides, all the nips and crannies. Yeah. So this stuff works really well. You know I've said that before. It's a really good product. Um, I wouldn't recommend it otherwise. So um, thanks for inviting us over. Thanks for yeah. supporting, man. Yeah. It's, it's really cool to see you guys supporting like the grassroots. I think that's super important. It's where um, we came from. It needs some love and a good wash. So it'll be getting that when we get home. One scratch there. Looks like it hit a rock or something. I'm sure once we wash it, we'll see some. Ooh, look at the rubber marks from bottoming out on the McNasty Firewall Guard. These front tires in a 34 um, are too big with the, with the, you can see they hit here too quite a few times. We hit hard a few times bottom, not bottomed out, but bottomed out the tire against the, um, exo bar there but this one hit hard a few times bottoms out against this it, it's almost like a it's almost like a mechanical bump stop <laughs> for the front let me tell you i made a lot more of these stickers than i needed not enough people survived <laughs> i'm gonna go get one to max though you're the best like honestly running extremely <laughs> to get this video like that's what keeps you in shape like, anyway, <laughs> I was telling you about your workout plan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to know, yesterday you'd mentioned that English is your second language and you're doing fabulous. What is Thank your you. original language? Ukrainian. I'm Ukrainian. Excellent. Oh, you, you guys are a great team. Thank you. We're going to ride together again. We're going to go up to yeah? Cal Bogey and we're going to cool. get together with his yeah. crew. And you guys like the technical stuff, so we'll have a good time. Yeah. 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 It was a pleasure meeting you too, yeah. man. Pleasure it was great meeting talking you. to you. See you again. Yes, yeah, we will. Tons of great people here, by the way, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. The atmosphere. This is what's all yeah. about. Yeah. Let's go get some breakfast. The food's been quite good at this event too. I have to say, it's um, it's it's tasty. I need everybody to uh, line up around the room and come through across the front of the stage. We're gonna give you a door price ticket for these awards up here. And we also have a, a commemorative uh, You Survive the Longest Day medallion. And then um, for our award winners, um, we have changed it up and we have now first, second, and first in gold, silver, and bronze, and iron medallions. So a little more special than it has been in the past, which is great. Ladies and gentlemen, did we all survive the longest day? Again, I want to thank all of you guys for signing up and supporting the event. This is awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely a, a feat, and uh, it's a defeat in, um, on your home. I know, like uh, some of you might have got out there and, and clocked in 150, 200K, and you either had trials and tribulations with your machines and had to call it a day, or you just completely spent whatever you had in the engine in your body and went. I gave this my best shot. And that's just as good, in my opinion, as the people that even finished the day. So a round of applause again for my work. Yeah. I want everyone that volunteered and Team RC to come right up here on the stage so you can be seen and recognized. And there are many more that either left or they just ran a checkpoint halfway across Ontario and then went home yesterday. There, there's a lot of them, and they're all great, great people. And uh, I, I personally want to thank you guys so much, man. You rock. Give them a really good applause. Go outside and start packing up all the that you great. Were you in gold class? Yeah. Congratulations, you're first place. <laughs> 
Congratulations, way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Team Mud Life, Cody Frey and Max Rock. Sunday, the event is all wrapped up. What an amazing experience. And what makes it even sweeter is, we're bringing home the gold medal for the solo side-by-side -side class. 21 hours, 29 minutes was our time to complete about 650 kilometers, 350 miles. We started at four in the morning and we got back to camp around 1.30 in the morning. It was the most grueling and longest trail ride we have ever done. All right, so we're closing up here with Tim. I mean, this didn't really go exactly according to plan. You put so much prep work in, um, so much support from all our sponsors, uh, so much work on the machine, so much wrenching, but sometimes the off-road gods just have different plans. We found plans. a new weak link. You know what, that's off-roading, guys. You, we, we talk about it all the time, and I mean, Tim's got really good days and Tim's got really bad days because when you're a full send rider, there's yep. not much middle ground. And I took my time and picked my good lines and drove like an out, uh, like a star. And um, but hey, you win some, you you lose some. Overall, how would you say this event was? Very, it was very organized. Like the Rally Connect crew and uh, you know the volunteers and that were outstanding. Uh, everybody was happy. Uh, leadership skills by Lee were just off the chart. I was just blown away by the support from everybody. Like, if you're into side by sides, if you're into ATVs, because I mean that's what we yeah. focus on, and you want a good heavy duty ride to test you and your equipment, would you recommend this ride? I would recommend it, but man, do like a thousand point checks because this is a very demanding. Do your homework. Yeah, this do is a very work. demanding, demanding course. Uh, not just on the machine, but you f physically. Yeah. Like, mentally. Mentally. Yeah. yeah. And you got to be on point yeah. with your GPS. And it's a GPS event. That yeah. is clear. And uh, it is tricky in places. It is sneaky in places. And um, with that being said, fatigue starts to play a role. Hunger starts to play a role. The elements play a role. We were blessed with the best weather, weather. possible, which made it a lot easier, minus some dust in areas. But you know what? I would say if you want to challenge, if you want to challenge yourself, if you want to challenge your machine, if you and your friends want to enter as a group or you want to ride solo, whether it's silver class, bronze class, or gold class, like Lee said, this is a challenge between you and the event. It, the goal is to finish, but even if you're let down mechanically and you come out here and you give it all it's got, you're still going to leave at the end of the day with some sort of an accomplished feeling. There's going to be some upset involved sometimes, yep. but what's that teach you? Next year, you know exactly what to yep. do, right? This was a pilot, right? Yeah. Tim, thanks for coming thanks out. For thanks for being me, part of the team. And yep. yeah, thanks to all the sponsors for looking after me, looking after Tim, making this possible. And the goal here is to get the numbers up. Guys, I'm telling you, there should be hundreds and hundreds of ATVs and side-by-sides here next year. The course can support it. The organizers can support it. You want a challenge. You want a good event that's got everything. Check out the Rally Connects website register for next year we'll see you out here so i'm sitting here with my friend chris from power sports link financing uh chris runs this business started it from the ground up and um chris why don't you tell us a little bit about power sports link how you got into this and, and why you chose this sector well thanks for having me on julian and again thanks for the opportunity to participate in your event um power sports link we provide a financial solution to uh the end user, the customer that wants to buy a toy that doesn't have the front end cash or doesn't want to use their own cash and rather keep the money in the bank. Uh, we're partnered with chartered banks so we can get you the best rates that are available in the marketplace. And the best part is, is they're completely open loans. So pay off what you want, how much you want, and you only pay for what you use. So essentially um, you provide people with a service that a lot of us need these days with power sports equipment, trailers, all that getting much more expensive over the years. You can set us up with the financing options for a motorcycle, an ATV, a side-by-side, -side, an RV, a trailer, anything we need along those lines. And you can offer us competitive rates, flexible plans, stuff like that. Yeah, the, the best part is, is we'll have the most aggressive rates in the marketplace. The cool thing you can do is you can you can finance a used machine through a Flares dealership or something like that. Oh yeah, all day long. Yeah. We can go up to 15 years old. So that's awesome. That opens up a lot of options with the used market growing. 
it, it, even though the machines are used, they're still quite expensive, but they're still about half the cost of a new one. So that opens up a door for a lot of people where in the past, I didn't even know you could finance a used machine. Chris informed me that you can finance a used machine, you can finance the used trailer. Uh, there's a lot of options out there. So anyways, guys, it's really cool to see brands like this supporting the grassroots industry, remembering where they came from. I mean, Chris grew up on a farm. He's been around this stuff his whole life. So he's mixed a passion with a career. And it's really cool to see that things are going well for you. So thanks a lot. Oh, thanks, John. We made it home, guys. I just can't get over how awesome this is. Um, what an event. I said it once, I'll keep saying it again. I'll be talking about this until we do it again next year. I think it's gonna be hard to top the experience we had um, with our first acre, but uh, I mean, we can chase the dragon and see if we can uh, one-up it. So, the machine's back. I can proudly say the battle wagon handled it like a champ. There doesn't seem to be any serious damage. I know we lost a mud flap, um, probably a few dings and scratches but no serious mechanical failures. Um, so we're gonna unload this bad boy and we're gonna get her looking nice and clean again because we've got another big event coming up in two weekends at Minden Off-Road Park. So we're getting ready for that, we never stop. Gonna get it off the trailer, gonna get the pressure washer out and you'll see this thing will be looking as good as new in no time. Uh, well, we left first thing in the morning. So uh, 4.05 4 or something, we left the gate and um, our day went like every off-roading trip, completely not like we planned it. <laughs> um, so we started off with having some issues. That kind of messed things up for a little bit in the morning. That set us back about an hour or so. Um, after that, we kind of get got moving, but everyone had already passed us. All the ATVs, all the side-by-sides, all the bikes. So we were basically at the back of the crew. Um, so what happened is for the rest of the event, we basically just battled our way through all the machines and um, made it back to camp, I think around, it's 1.30. Uh, everything's kind of like a blur right now. But um, we made it back at 1.30 and um, we went to find out that we were the first gold class side-by-side -side to make it back. So we actually ended up passing everyone throughout the day. Uh, there was a few more run-ins, a few people with flat tires. We stopped and lended a hand. Uh, when you see someone on the trail messed up, you don't just drive by. You gotta ask, make sure they're okay. Lend a hand where a hand's needed. Um, but somehow we still managed to, um, to make it back in pretty good time. It was a wild event. Um, the terrain wasn't overly difficult in comparison to what we usually ride. It was the time and the distance that got us. Um, keeping yourself together, keeping your machine together, picking good lines so that you don't KO yourself on a boulder or something like that, so you don't get a flat tire. It's kind of like obstacle avoidance. Um, in, it's pacing yourself. It's exactly what Lee was telling us. Pace yourself, slow down, and you'll speed up. Um, overall, 10 out of 10 event. The way this event is organized, Lee, the personality he's got, uh, the energy that he's got around this whole, this whole event, um, everyone that was here, whether you just met them or you've known them, everyone's super friendly. Um, the atmosphere was awesome. The trails were awesome. The weather was awesome. The food was awesome. The, the setup was awesome. 10 out of 10 event. If you can make it to the Dacre Rally, if you like two wheels or four wheels, whether it's ATV or side by side, you need to get out here. Next year, I want to see hundreds more people here. Um, the side-by-side -side class wasn't huge. There should be hundreds of side-by-sides out here. You wanna test yourself and you wanna test your machine, I swear there's no better place. We've never put this much mileage in in one day as we did here. If the longest day isn't a joke, it took us about 21 and a half hours, I think, from when we left to when we came back non-stop. And you feel it, but you know what? About halfway through, you start getting that feeling of um, being energized and like you wanna get to the end, you wanna make it through, and it just keeps you going. I was not tired at all during the event. I got back here and that's when, when the, the, I burnt out. Hung out, got the excitement, through the event, everything was awesome. Once you get here, you're just like, how did I do that? Um, come out, all I gotta say is come out, make it out to this event, um, it's amazing. And that, big shout out to Lee and what he's doing for the community because without events like this, what would we do? Where would we ride? Where would we abuse our bodies and our machines?